Starting mares on the track, eighth race, the Classic Oaks, first 250,000, distance a mile and a quarter. Number one from Georgetown, Ontario, Canada, owned by Erky Lakonen, the U.S. Harness Riders Association's three-year-old trotter of 2003 and a winner of $1.8 million lifetime. This four-year-old finished third in all three of her Classic Oaks eliminations, trained by Gary Borgong. Her driver is Trevor Ritchie, number one, Cameron Hall. Two owned in New Egypt, New Jersey by a Trillium Racing Stable, a steady performer all season who has won more than 272000 in her career. She has finished second in two of her three Classic Oaks eliminations, trained by Jim Raymer. Luke Willett drives number two, Scully FBI. Number three owned in Lexington, Kentucky by Nexstar Racing Stable. After racing most of the fall season in Ontario, she returned to the U.S. for the Classic Oaks. A winner of $258,000 lifetime, trained by Brett Biddle. Michael Chance drives number three, Dig That Girl. Number four from Santa Barbara, California, owned by longtime harness patron Joe Mendelson. She won a Classic Oaks division at Mohawk and finished second at Dover Downs earlier this month. A winner of six races and 11 of 12 times in the money this year, trained and driven by Mike Zeller, number four, Cartier Hall. The five, owned in Ontario by Marvin Katz and his breeder Al Libfeld, one of Canada's standout trotting mares and a winner of more than $741,000 lifetime. She finished second in her classic Oaks elimination at Dover this month, trained by Dan Creighton. Brian Sears drives number five, Gypsy Balance. The six, owned in Maryland by Charles Keller the third and fourth, along with Dan Biddle, a two-time classic Oaks elimination winner. She set a world record, 153 and four, here at Dover Downs, she has won more than 690000 in her career. Brett Biddle trains and Ron Pierce drives number six, Windy Lane Hanover. Seven, from Toronto, Ontario, Canada, owned by C.A. Burns Limited, a top Canadian bred and a winner of a classic Oaks division at Mohawk, a winner of more than 318000 lifetime, trained by Jeff Mulpey. John Campbell drives number seven, Dresden Dahl. Completing the field eight, owned in New Hope, Pennsylvania by William Mullion, a prominent filly on the grand circuit at both two and three. She has won more than $282,000. Bill Poffinger trains. Dave Miller drives. Number eight, Sophia, let's go. Distance a mile and a quarter. Post time in just five minutes. Eighth race field behind the gate moving up. Classic Oaks for trotting mares, purse 250000 There we come. Vera from the outside. There goes Dresden Dolly. Off stride, Sophia. Let's go. Down toward the inside, Cameron Hall moving through. It's Cameron Hall with Dresden Dolly up on the outside. Scully FBI got away in third, trotting fourth there. That's Dig That Girl. Right behind Dig That Girl, Cartier Hall. Then comes Gypsy Balance in fifth. Racing in sixth there is Windy Lane Hanover. Far back there and off stride early was Sophia Let's Go as they move up the back stretch. It's Dresden Dolly with that lead. Dresden Dolly trotting on top. Cameron Hall now comes to the outside and Cameron Hall goes by and gets the lead from Dresden Dolly. It's another two and a half lengths to Scully FBI. Then comes Dig That Girl followed by Cartier Hall. Opening quarter, 28 and 3 fifths. They're moving on the turn. Cameron Hall's on top, followed by Dresden Dolly. Then it's Scully, FBI in third. Racing fourth is Dig That Girl. Cartier Hall is racing in fifth. Then comes Gypsy Balance, followed by Windy Lane Hanover. As they trot by the stands up front, it's Cameron Hall there in 59 seconds. Cameron Hall, Dresden Dolly sitting in second. Scully, FBI, eases to the outside. Following will be Cartier Hall. Down inside, Dig That Girl is fifth. Then it's Gypsy Balance and Windy Lane Hanover. As they go into that clubhouse turn, Cameron Hall has the lead. It's Cameron Hall. Scully, FBI, is up on the outside. Dresden Dolly down toward the rail is third. Trotting in fourth is Cartier Hall. That three quarters in 129. And two-fifths. They make their way toward the back stretch now. And it's Cameron Hall with 
took that lead by a length. Scully up behind on the outside. Down at the rail, Dresden Valley coming fast. Three wide. That looks like Gypsy Balance. Then moving up the back stretch. Gypsy Balance up on the outside. Is up to get a short lead. Scully up behind is there. Cameron Hall dropped out of it. Here comes Windy Lane. Out of her up into third. As they go around the final turn now. From the outside, Gypsy Bounds and Scully up the eye. Three lanes. Windy Lane, Hanover into third. They're coming toward the top of the stretch. Mile in 158. Toward the inside, Scully, FBI, and Luke. They've got a short lead over Gypsy Bounds coming off the turn. It's Scully, FBI, coming through the stretch. Scully, FBI, is on top. On the outside, that's Gypsy Bounds, who cannot gain any ground now. It's Scully, FBI, and Luke. In front, Gypsy Balance and Whitney Lane, Hanover, 227-1. Entering the winner's circle, entering the winner's circle, two Scully FBI, five row brown mare by SJ's photo owned by Trillium Racing Stable of New Egypt, New Jersey, trained by Jim Raymer, driven to victory by Luke Willette, number four tonight for Luke Willette, 227 and one fifth in the winner's circle, making a blanket presentation is Nick Salvi, executive director of the Classic Series, along with publicity director Marv Bachrod, manager of harness racing. John Hensley, also in the winner's circle, Randy Mangus, a Harrington, Delaware native, general manager of Kentucky Standard Bread Sales Company of Lexington, Kentucky. Thank you again, Jack Gallagher. And uh, look, we have to stop meeting like this uh, in the winter circle like this. You're having another real big day. How about Scully uh, FBI? How about uh, her performance? Well, uh, as you can see, it was very good, and uh, she's been racing really good. Uh, she just missed by a nose last week at the Meadowlands, and, uh, you know, she's just perfect. You could see she she doesn't wear any boots. She trots perfect. She's very honest. Um, you know, the way the race went was sort of a good way for her. When when that horse wound up on the front end, and I thought maybe I'd take a shot at him at the three-quarter, mm -hmm. I mean, up the backside there at the mile pole, you know, for the last quarter. I, I thought we'd get around him because uh, she's got a lot of uh, go. She tries real hard, and Cameron Hall, she gets a little lonely on the front end, so I was hoping it would work out. Do you have any uh, extra plan when you go a mile and a quarter rather than the traditional mile race? Well, you know they're going to go slow fraction most of the time, so you'll be able to sit in for quite a ways, you know? And uh, a horse race is a horse race, you know? Like, it comes down to the finish, you know? that. That's always the same. But most of the time, you know, you'll see slower fraction at the beginning of the race. But uh, like I said earlier, when I seen you know, that horse on the front end, and I didn't mind being first up and taking a shot at it. Thank you very much, Luke Wallet, one of four winners. He's won the two uh, Classic Series events so far. And Jim Raymer, Trillium Stable. Uh, Jim, you've uh, raced horses around here for a while. I didn't realize you were the Trillium. Well, my wife and my partner of about 25 years, Steve Oregon, they're the partners that are together on Trillium. I just manage them. <laughs> what about uh, this filly or this mare? Uh, give us a little background. Well, we bought her as a yearling off Cosmos Horse Breeders, and she was originally Safe Play Cosmos, and for me it's been a safe play all the way along. And uh, she was a little immature at two, but she was a real honest at three, and she's only grown year after year to be a little better. And this more than tops it all off. How about uh, going into this race? How apprehensive were you? I really like the way she raced last week, but she loves the Meadowlands. I don't know what it is. She's a small horse, but she tries every step of the mile. And Luke said last week that, you know, she should have earned a win, but he felt that our chances this week, if she could get a hold of the track, she'd be a little better. So we took our chance, and we shot her to help her grab the track, and she was a little better than she was the time before. So 